All right, Algebra 1, MCAT. This is an important test. This is a test that you probably never experienced before. It's like this. If you don't pass it, you have to take it again. And if you get to 10th grade, you might have to take it again twice if you can't pass it. And then, you know, they're not going to let you graduate without passing this. Thing. Graduation requirement. And I just did the math eight practice test and it was a bear. So if you Google MCAP practice, that's where we're going to find it. Mathematics, all of it's here and algebra one. And I like to just do the uh, paper one, do the big download this guy, put it on my website. All right. Algebra one. So here we go. Section one, non-calculator. All right, I had a calculator, but put that over there. Okay, you guys ready? Write everything down. That'll be the best thing you can do. The function f is defined as f of x equals x squared minus six x plus 14. What is the minimum value of f of x? That's not hard. We just need to find the minimum value. So uh, one thing you should know, though, is that they are asking for the y value. All right, so f of x is a y value. They didn't say what is the x that would produce the minimum value of f of x. Then they would be asking for the x value. And they're asking you for the y value of the vertex. Which most algebra one students should be able to know because it's quadratic season. So x equals negative b over 2a will get us the x coordinate. a equals 1, b equals negative 6, b equals 14. And so negative negative 6 over 2 times 1 is going to be 6 over 2 or 3. Don't choose 3 because we got to substitute it in. You see, so three squared minus six times three plus 14, no calculator, nine minus 18 plus 14, nine minus 18 is negative nine plus 14. Subtract those numbers, five to five. All right, integers, order of operations, function notation, a lot of different concepts covered right there. Good question. Good question, MCAT people. What value of X is the solution of the equation? Blah. Right, enter your answer and please provide. Okay, will do. So this one, first thing I thought when I saw it was, we better divide, we better multiply by five and get that five out of the denominator. <clears throat> so anytime you have a denominator, multiply by it and it's gone. And then we can just distribute. Okay, so now we'll get our variables on our left and numbers on the right. And if we go over the line, we'll change the signs. Three X. This guy's going over the line, so negative 5x. This guy's going over the line, so this is going to be a positive 7. And that's negative 2x, and that's 12. Divide, divide, x equals negative 6. All right? All right. So, you know, not every question on the MCAP is too bad, but some of them are meant to shake your confidence. So not so much. The graph of y equals f of x is shown in the xy plane. So the coordinate grid can be called an xy plane. Which equation defines function f? All right, let's find function f. So we know the y-intercept and slope. 
is going to be seven five. So the slope is rise over run seven over five. So the equation would be seven over five x minus seven. But hey, I wonder if they are trying to trick us. Nope, they're not trying to trick us. Seven over five x minus seven. It's a. Okay. Come on, Algebra 1 MK. Where's the hard ones? Which of the following expressions can be written as AX plus B, AX minus B, where A and B are integers? Oh, okay. All right. All right. So I see that um, this, this is the difference of squares. Do you remember that? X squared minus 25 is X plus five, X minus five. Also something like four X squared minus nine, where we have a coefficient on X squared, that's what we just take the square root of that. So it's two X minus three, two X plus three. Doesn't matter which one comes first, the minus or the plus. Okay, so which of the following expressions can be written like that? Any that are difference of squares, where we have integers. So actually everything can be written of a difference of some type of square, but they only want integers. So we're talking about that. 11 is not a perfect square. One is a perfect square, four is. No. So just choose the ones only with the perfect square so we get integer coefficients and terms. Five, which of the following sums or products are rational? Aha, so the rational. What is a rational number? Is we don't really talk a lot about this in algebra one and then they put it on the test. So rational is Anything you can write it can be written as a fraction. And then the opposite is irrational, which cannot be written as a fraction. But instead of just saying that, I'm gonna give you some examples. So anything with pi, anything, uh, Never ending, no pattern, but beware of one over seven. Go ahead, divide one by seven on your calculator. It looks like it doesn't have a pattern, but it's rational because it can be written as a fraction. Uh, and non-perfect square roots. So hopefully that's enough for us to, so this is a non-perfect square root. So that is, oh, that is not rational. This, these never end, but they have a pattern. So that is rational. This is a non-perfect square root. Five is a non-perfect square root. Even though four is perfect, five is not. So you don't count. But e, four and nine are both perfect. So that's just two plus three. Obviously rational. Um, F is a rational number times a rational number. So it's rational. Set of rational numbers is closed under multiplication. Okay. So, you know, study up on that for a second. Don't get that question wrong because it's not that hard. Um, unless you don't know about it, right? The equation x squared minus eight x minus five can be transformed into the equation x minus p squared equals q, where p and q are real numbers. So real numbers are the irrational and the rational put together. Anything except imaginary and complex, which we don't talk about in algebra one. We don't talk about the square root of the matrix. Mm -hmm. Okay, what is the value of q? Don't they wanna know the value of p? So what we're going to do, we're going to complete the square. You remember that? Completing the square? It's not very fun. But we could also use a shortcut. We could just put in the vertex form. Would you like to do that? 
this year. And then in vertex form, so vertex form a x minus h squared plus k. And the k is the same sign in the h is the opposite sign of the vertex, right? So, but now that they put the Q on the other side of the equal sign, we're gonna find the vertex, but we're gonna switch both of the signs because the P is already a switch sign and the Q is on the wrong side of the equal sign. Oh, we can still start off with our negative B over two A, okay? And so that would be negative negative eight or eight over two A is uh, Two times one by two, and that's just four. So we already got we already got one. So if they ask for p, we'd be done. And now to find q, all we gotta do is substitute the four into our equation. So four squared minus eight times four minus five, sixteen minus thirty-two minus five, negative sixteen minus five is negative twenty-one. So we're going to put positive 21. The answer is 21. Circle in the two and the one on your answer sheet. <laughs> okay. Hopefully everyone's doing good. And you know, if you try this by yourself, so I should have said this earlier, then you can just fast forward to the solution, you know, and then listen to me if you need to, because this is kind of a long, it's going to be a long series of videos. Mr. Carnegie will buy pencils and pens for his students in the school year. All right, so you see pencils and pens, but I see X and Y. That's what I see. All right. He can spend no more than $30 on pencils and pens. Okay. Pencil noted. Oh, so, so it's going to be like this. It's going to be less than or equal to 30, right? Pencils cost 0.15 each. So that's the, co the coefficient of X. The pens cost 75 cents each. So add that. He needs to buy, so this is our total cost of food. Now we know that he needs to buy three times as many pencils as pens. So, 3x at least, okay, so at least is greater than or equal to y. Okay, so hold on a minute. I hope that they made x pencils or y pens because that's what I did. And I see that they did because look, the 15.15x. So that's good. All right, so we want it to be less than or equal to. So you're gone and you're gone. All right. And then we want the, so it's going to be y is less than or equal to 3x. They're really trying to trick so this one, right? So if you, we started with that when you were thinking about it, but we can just flip it around. But when you flip it around, you have to flip that inequality sign too. Okay. All right. Back to functions, vertex form I'm seeing. And uh, this, uh, I'm shifting it down to, right? We're taking the Y values and subtracting two from each of them. Okay. Oh, and we're talking about quadrants, but they gave us the quadrants. One, two, three, four, just in case you forgot. So what is the question? What are you trying to do? Which quadrant contain the points on the graph of Y equals G of X? All right, all right, so. Vertex form is the form of the quadratic that we can shift around, right? Once we know where the vertex is, if we were to add or subtract from the X coordinate of the vertex, we would move the quadratic left or right. If we were to add or subtract from the Y coordinate of the vertex, we would move the quadratic up and down. So just like on the first question of this test, I know f of x represents a y coordinate. We're taking those y values and we're subtracting two. 
Okay, so what's the y value at the vertex? It's one, right? So we're gonna subtract two, and that gets us g of x. It's just that simple. x minus five squared minus one. So now I know that I would go one, two, three, four, five, and then put my vertex. I know it opens up because I don't see any negative A values anywhere. So it opens up. So it's like that. All right, so it starts in quadrant four and then goes up to quadrant one, eventually passing through quadrant two. Never touches quadrant three. What quadrants contain points on the graph? Hey, I didn't even realize I was answering that question. One, two, and four. One, two, and four. C is your answer. That was an interesting question. So a lot of these, you may know how to do it, or it may be 80% of the way. And then they ask you in a way that makes it like, well, if you ask me that way, she just messed me up, right? But hey, that's why we review and practice, and that's the point of the test. Don't ever give up, keep trying. You know, come back to the questions if you can, although yeah, let's keep going. Samantha has $35 in her savings account. When I see that, I wonder what you think. I think Y intercept. Right now, she has $35. Good job, Samantha. At the end of each week, she will add $20. Each week, I'm thinking that's a slope. So already in my head, I'm thinking 20x plus 35. So what do they want to know? Hey, is it this? Is that the answer? Which equation discusses? Yeah, because just like we said, the slope is the change each week and the y-intercept is the initial amount, the initial value. And see, that was an easy question. All right, a system of equations. What is the value of x in the solution to the system? All right, so let's switch gears to systems of equations. When we have systems of equations, we want to ask ourselves, what forms are the equations in? If they're in standard form, both of them, we want to eliminate. If one or both of them are in slope-intercept form, we want to substitute, substitution. And we can see that both equations are in slope-intercept form. So I am gonna choose, could choose either one and substitute it into the other. So I'm gonna do nine X minus one into the second equation. So we end up with that, right? Put our variables on our left, nine X. And when we do that, we switch the sign, two X. Three, put our numbers on our right. That's going over there. Nine minus two is seven. Three plus one is four. X equals four over seven. All right. How long is this non calculated for? It must be nearing the end. That doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We're keeping going. A student is saving money in a bank account to buy a computer. The function f of w equals 35w plus 10 represents the total amount of money f in dollars in the student's account W weeks after the student started saving for the computer. What does the number 10 in the function represent in this context? 10 is the y-intercept. It's an initial amount of whatever f of w represents, which represents total money. f is money. So it's the initial amount of money that the student had before they started saving. And that is C, I see right there. The number of dollars in the account when the student started saving for the computer. The y-intercept. All right. 12. Two quadratic relationships, J and K, are represented in the following table and graph respectively. Which of the following statements about the relationships are true? Ew. Okay, the x intercepts, y intercepts, minimum value. Okay, well, 
my algebra class, we have a song. At the x-intercept, the y is zero. At the y-intercept, the x is zero, something like that. And so we know our x-intercepts already by looking for where the y is zero. We know our y-intercept where the x is zero. We know our y-intercept. And the vertex here, right there. The vertex in the table, I'm gonna look at the y values and I'm gonna see their change. So 10, zero, negative six, negative eight, negative six, zero, 10. Ah, I see the lowest value is right here. Negative one, eight is the vertex. Okay, so. Now I found all the key components of both quadrants. But what do we want to know? The y-intercepts, the x-intercepts for the relationships j are five units apart. Okay, j, the, the x-intercept right now, of course. Five units apart. So from negative three to one is not five units. Negative three to one is four. So b is a is not right. The x-intercepts for k are five units apart. From negative one, one, two, three, four. That's true. Okay, so b is, let's write it down. B is true. C, the y-intercept for the relationship j is six units from the origin. Where is the relationship j? Where are you, relationship j? Six units from the origin. Yes, the y-intercept is negative six. That is six units from the origin. D, the y-intercept for the relationship k is six units from the origin. Yes, the k has uh, six units from the origin as well, a positive six. The function j has a minimum value. Which one's j again? Yes, it does. It has a minimum value the lowest value. And K has a maximum value. So E is also right. All right, so that was know your key components, your X intercept, Y intercept, vertex, minimum, maximum, all of that of quadratics. The expression two X plus X minus seven squared is equivalent to X squared plus BX plus 49. For all values of x, what is the value of b? All righty. Well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to simplify 2x plus x minus 7 squared. And this will become a multiplication. So I'll draw my area model just to illustrate it. That's negative 7, negative 7x, negative 7x, 49. Put those together and get negative 14x. So that's what x squared, x minus seven squared is. So two x plus x squared minus 14 x plus 49, adding the components from the table. <clears throat> now I'm gonna combine the like terms, which are just these two. So x squared minus 12 x plus, I figured it out. The answer is, Negative 12, negative 12. Oh, the stop sign. I am so glad to see that stop sign. All right, so we're going to end this video and start up again in a new one at a new time.